This will be on lab two, on lab three, I should say, uh, on the Atwood machine, which is named after George Atwood, who in the 1700s tried to analyze more accurately the relationship of Newton's second law of motion, F equals MA, or forces in mass, and Newton's, I should say, mass is in kilograms, acceleration is in meters per second squared. So this is, what this says is that if we have a mass and we apply a force to it, it will undergo acceleration. If there's no force, and that force on it, the acceleration is zero, it'll move at constant velocity. All right, now the problem with acceleration, it's very hard to uh, analyze simply, unless you have a computer or some kind of video camera to actually do stop action motion. So example, if I drop this, it falls very quickly. It's hard to figure out what's actually happening. So what he did uh, was come up with this what we call antler machine, and it's a pulley with two masses on each side. Uh, one is larger than the other. In the case, they are both the same. Uh, the, diff the acceleration would be zero because it's balancing out. So in this case, if they're opposite, so if one is 195 and the other is 205 grams, the difference is 10 grams. The force applied would be the difference of the two because this, this is pulling down here, this is pulling down there. So force would be M1 minus M2 or times G. But since they are connected together as this pulls, this pulls along with it, so they are stuck together. So the mass would be M1 plus M2 and the acceleration would be that. So this is the relationship of uh, the Atwood machine of the force pulling, the mass that's actually being accelerated, and the measured acceleration. So we measured the acceleration using logger pro, which we normally do in the lab, but this year I, I've done the data for you. I have examples showing how each one works, so you can sort of see conceptually how each one operates, and then we did it from there. So relationship of, of Newton's second law when it comes to weight is weight is mass times G. So if somebody weighs, has a mass of 100 kilograms times G, they have a weight of 180 Newtons. Now as you know, weight depends on where you are. On the moon, it's one-sixth of what it is on Earth. So your mass would be the same, but your weight would be different. So what we're going to be doing in, in this lab is the first part we'll be looking at uh, data table one is keeping the mass, increasing the mass difference. We take weight off here, add it to this one, so that the total is 400. You can see this on data table one. You can fill out the data table, so it'll increase by five grams each time. For data table two, what we'll do is then uh, keep the <clears throat> mass different constant, but just add weight to each side and see what the acceleration does. And there'll be several questions with this. So I'm gonna first do is demonstrate short video for each part we're doing, and then I'll show you analysis of how we actually do uh, to get the data and then to answer the questions. So there'll be a multiple choice quiz for this and you'll have three attempts to do the quiz. All right, so that's lab three. Hey, we're gonna be doing uh, 195 on the left, 205 on the right, and let it accelerate. <coughs> Next, we're gonna do 190 on the left, 210 on the right, so a change of five for both. Okay, next we're going to do 185 on the left, 215 on the right, 180 on the left, 220 on the right. Watch the chain again. We're now increasing the mass on this side by five and decreasing by five. So now we have a difference of 40. One where we have 175 on the left. 225 on the right, so a total difference of 
50. Okay. So that is uh, the first where we keep the total constant and increase the difference by 10 on each time. For part two, we're going to have the total difference between the two masses constant and then increase them each time as on data table two. So the 100 on the left, 120 on the right, and we'll measure the acceleration. Okay, anyway. Uh, 120 on the left, 140 on the right. Let's see what happens to the acceleration. We have to do 140 on the left, 160 on the right. Again, keeping the, the mass difference constant. 160 on the left, 180 on the right. Again, keep the mass con difference constant. 180 on the left, 200 on the right. Okay, again, keep the mass difference constant. And all right, uh, we did the Atwood machine. I showed you examples for part one, where we have a total of 400 grams. We increase the difference between M1 and M2. And then part two, where we keep the difference constant and increase the mass on both sides. So as a result of that, I gave you the example of one set of data of how we did that using Logger Pro and a computer. Uh, to save time, I've gone through the data, and here is what we have, all right? So column one is a trial, column two is the mass M1, column three is the mass M2, and column four is the acceleration for each one. So. For the first part, we have difference of, of 10 grams. The acceleration is 0 0.220. For 20 grams, uh, the acceleration is 0.445. For 30 grams, the acceleration is 0 0.680. For 40 grams difference, the acceleration is 0.921. And for 50 grams difference, it's 1.015. So the total was stayed the same in each part. And this is this is actually grams here. We all need to convert it to kilograms. We actually want to calculate this. So that's part one. All right, for part two, what we have there, uh, we kept the total difference constant. I've kept this up on the board. And in this case, here is data for that. All right, so M column one is a trial. Column two is M1, which starts at 120 and increases by 20 up to 200. Column three is M2, which starts at 100 and increases by 20 up to 180. Note that the difference between each of those two is 20 grams, which is in column five. Column four is the acceleration, and that for the sum of 220 grams is 0.84 meters per second squared. For 260 grams, it's 0.75 meters per second squared. For 300 grams total, it's 0.68. For 340 grams, it's 0.55. And for 380 grams, 0.43. So part of the analysis will be looking at how does the acceleration change as we keep the mass difference the same, but increase the total mass. So that is lab three as far as how to do it. Uh, you have the data there. Uh, you can use a video to get the data, enter it on your data sheet, and then answer the questions on the lab. Uh, you have three attempts to do this lab. So if you have any questions, let me know.